Hello everyone, my name is Prashant and today I am going to talk about an important file system which is present in your Linux. It's called a proc file system, which is a kind of a virtual file system and it is mainly being used by the kernel for maintaining the data structure as well as the monitoring and tuning purposes. So if you look at slash proc which is present in your system, it is mainly consists of these files and directories. Uh, the directories are mainly the process which are running on your system and its data structure. So for example, this is the process of the PID1 is the init process and if you need to look at this this is how it looks so the sleeping state the PID, PID, all these information are stored inside this uh, prop as well as your PID directory so uh, for tuning purpose you have a special interface called prop slash sys uh, if you need to modify any of these values you can do it either with the help of a sysctl which is our user space utility and it basically being used a sysctl system call to make any of the changes so all these changes are not persistent across reboot and if you need to make any changes which is remain persistent across reboot you need to use a configuration file called e 2 to make those changes persistent across reboot so let's say if I need to change the current value of a swappiness uh, I can check it with the help of this command line and if I need to change this value, let's say for 70, I can make it with the help of this command. But this changes doesn't persist across reboot. So to make this changes persistent across reboot, I need to make changes inside this file and change it to something say 80. Now to read this configuration file, I need to then a command cost is ctl p which is by default read this configuration file and reload this file into the memory and whatever the setting which is being specified inside this file either I can use this way or I can mention any other file let's say in the form of a token which is this pm dot swappiness and its value for example say 80 to make these changes on the fly on the command line I need to use this let's say 90 so if I check it 90 but these changes are not persistent across reboot so that like I said earlier if you need to make this change persistent across reboot uh, you need to make the changes inside the etc.com now a modern operating system nowadays have provided you something called this ctl.d which is currently not present in my system where you can create your custom files and do those changes so these are some of the things which you can do with the sysctl but you cannot make any of many changes or it is been having a some sort of a limitation so let's say uh, you cannot make any application level changes with the help of a sysctl or if you want uh, let's say you have a symmetric multiprocessing system and you do not want your system to improve uh, in the symmetric uh, multiprocessing mode you can you need to pass out the parameter called for example no SNMP, uh, no SNMP on the command line and uh, you do not want that parameter to be changed or take into effect once the system is booted so these kind of a parameters you need to uh, make changes when the system is booting so this you need to pass on the kernel command line parameters here after this parameter so because your proc is all been filled up and it's been cluttered out by a lot of information so starting from kernel 2.6 we have something called a spatial directory which is also a virtual file system called sys and this has been introduced by kernel 2.6 and whatever the limitations we have with the proc it is basically been used to overcome with all those limitations so it has been used mainly to show the device level information so once you have a uh, device uh, installing your system and you have a and that its drivers are registered based on whatever the drivers we are using kernel automatically create a directory structure inside your sys and populate the value with the, that data structure so uh, like I said earlier most of the legacy uh, stuff are still present inside the proc file system but uh, whatever the information related to buses and drivers are still being exposed to the help of a sys file system so some of the changes which you can do with the help of this uh, sys file system for example I have a multiple processors which are running on my system and I want to disable one of the processor on the file just for testing purpose so let's say in this system this system has 0 
and two processor running our system. So let's say I want to disable processor number two just for my testing purpose. So this I can do with the help of let's say we have a active process devices system CPU CPU two online. So I just need to pass this value equal zero. Uh, oh. So now as you can see that my system only has one process. So these are some of the things which you can do to re-enable it back. We want to. So these are some of the things we can do with the help of this system. Thanks for watching my video.